And we have some breaking news for you now. A federal grand jury has indicted that Air National Guardsman accused of posting a trove of classified documents on Discord social media. 21-year-old Jack Teixeira, you may recall, was arrested and charged under the Espionage Act in April. Let's bring in CNN's Oren Lieberman, who's at the Pentagon Force. Oren, tell us about this indictment. Uh, Jake, 21-year-old Jack Teixeira, a member of the Massachusetts Air National Guard, has been indicted on six counts of willful retention and transmission of classified information relating to the national defense. As of right now, he is being detained uh, pending additional hearings and pending the uh, continuation of this case here and the upcoming trial. He has not yet entered a plea. According to the Department of Justice, he, he disseminated this information in two different fashions over the course of months beginning back in January 2022. Uh, remember, he entered the Air National Guard in 2019, got a security clearance a couple of years later, and then began disseminating this, according to the Department of Justice, in January 2022. At first, he would access the classified information online, according to DOJ, and then take notes on it and spread it that way on the Discord server. And then, as this process continued, according to DOJ, he would take images of these documents that were labeled secret or top secret and spread the, and spread the documents like that, actual images of classified and top secret documents. Department of Justice alleges that there could have been and was a grave danger to national security, and that's why we're seeing uh, these serious charges at this point. The question now, uh, where does this go from here, and when will Jack Deshera enter a plea? That's certainly a development we'll keep an eye on. According to the release here from the Department of Justice, each of these counts carries up to 10 years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000. So, Jake, very easy to get a sense of how seriously DOJ and the government view this case. Yeah, Orrin Laborman at the Pentagon for us. Thank you so much. I want to bring back CNN Chief Legal Analyst Laura Coates, along with former acting U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, uh, Michael Sherwin, um, Laura, how serious are these charges against Deshira? Extremely serious. He actually was alleged to have disseminated images of classified documents at a variety of different levels on this chat room called Discord. There is some statements about him maybe doing it for bragging rights or otherwise. Obviously, that was not persuasive to avoid any charges because it is the core of the Espionage Act. We're talking a lot about the title of that statute. People think about the James Bond or Ethan Hunt of Mission Impossible. Really, it's about preserving the sanctity of documents we want to keep close to the vest that are defense-related information that should not be exposed to the outside world. And if they do, they're harmful to the United States or could aid in our foreign allies or foreign adversaries' work. And so this underscores the gravitas associated with those who have the authority to have documents and either misuse it or never had it to begin with. Remember, the nature of his work as an Air National Guardsman left him able to access the documents, but unrelated to an actual security level of clearance for him. He should not have had access fully to the documents, nor to disseminate the way he did. So this just shows you any conversation about, well, no one ever is prosecuted for cases like this. We are slapping some on the wrist and others are getting indictments. There you have it. And this is for a now, Air National Guardsman is also one now for a former commander in chief. Yeah, and I'll get to that in a second. But on the Tashira issue, how how do you defend this? I mean, like it seems like they got him dead to rights. Yeah. He did it. Here are the documents. They caught him. I, 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 look, it's going to be a tough case to defend because of I think it's clear the evidence is dissemination. But I think what's interesting here is. Like Laura just mentioned, when you bring these cases, you know, the evidence may be clear, but it's also sometimes an indictment with the government because you ask, why is a 21-year-old given access to TSSEI materials when he doesn't need it? Right. He may not have any operational need for those classified materials. Despite that, he's still given a clearance. There's still literal operational control of how he could access that information, how he could disseminate it. So, so look, in some ways, bringing this case to trial could be embarrassing to the Department of Defense. What checks were in place to actually protect that information and allow this very young enlisted officer to have some very high level information that he never even needed for his job. So I'm just looking, I'm just looking at this press release from the U.S. Attorney's Office um, in Massachusetts from today. And I don't know if the acting U.S. Attorney Joshua Levy or the acting special agent in charge of the FBI, Christopher Demena, I don't know if this is boilerplate language or they're making a point, but if you read it, what they say about the Tashira uh, case. Individuals granted access to classified materials have a fundamental duty to safeguard the information for the safety of the U.S., our active service members, its citizens, and its allies. We're committed to ensuring that those entrusted with sensitive national security information adhere to the law. That's from the acting U.S. attorney. The American people entrust security clearance holders with our nation's secrets and anybody who flagrantly violates their duty to protect those secrets. 
by unlawfully communicating classified national defense, defense information to people who are not entitled to receive it will be brought to justice to answer for their criminal conduct. That's from the acting special agent in charge of the FBI. Those comments could have been made about President Trump. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those are the same comments that were made about Chelsea Manning, what, several years ago. And it's, this is like Chelsea Manning 2.0, another young enlisted person, access to top secret TSSCI information, little operational control and dissemination. So again, these charges are serious. Uh, I think the evidence is compelling. But on the other side of the coin, what has DOD done over the past 10 years to safeguard this information? What operational checks have they done to ensure people have the right access to this information? I think this is just deja vu all over again. And Laura, obviously there's a, there's a real difference here, not only because a, a president has the right to classify or declassify information, although there's no evidence that he de declassified any of the ma ma relevant material in this case, but also um, we don't know of, we know of two instances of him talking about classified material or showing something, Donald Trump, but this dissemination was massive and worldwide. The Washington Post is still writing stories based on this classified information. Does that matter? Does the, the fact of the dissemination matter when it comes to prosecution uh, or conviction? Well, one, there's no perfect analogy, and we see that the Espionage Act encompasses and contemplates a wide variety of behavior. Dissemination can be charged under different aspects and elements of the actual Espionage Act. Certainly for the public's opinion, they might say to themselves, okay, the willful retention, it feels wrong to the letter of the law, but I'm more worried if this information, which is normally, as Jack Smith underscored, attached to a human being, compromises our channels of communication, our diplomacy, thinking about those aspects, I might be more concerned about that aspect if it's disseminated. But it is still something that's violative of the law because we don't know if you are willfully retaining information. One, what's your motivation? Have you disseminated in some way I have yet to detect, or did you intend to do so? The idea of it just gathering cobwebs has never been a very convincing notion for many people as to why you'd retain them. But I think it does matter in the court of public opinion and politically as to the why and how you use them. Interesting. Laura Coates, Michael Sherwin, thanks to both of you.